I have been validating other people's feelings and emotions rather than my own because I felt for whatever reason it was okay to minimize my self-worth so I can accommodate for other people. What is up, you guys, and welcome back to the Unleash the Real You show, a show where we inspire and empower women across the the globe. So if this is your first time clicking on my face, I want to personally welcome you and thank you for choosing personal development and growth. This is not your first time clicking on the podcast. I want to welcome you back. Hi, girl. How are you? I hope you guys have been doing fantastic. I know I haven't been on here for quite a while, but I do have a big announcement. We have officially moved the podcast to YouTube. So if you guys want to follow me and have the ability to watch this podcast, you guys can check it out at It's Priscilla, I-T-S. P-R-I-C-E-L-L-A-A. With that being said, let's get right into today's topic and let's get started. So as you guys heard from the intro, we're going to be talking about how to stop feeling insecure about yourself. Now, I know a lot of people have personally experienced dealing with insecurity. I know personally, I have dealt with insecurity for a long time, whether you guys know it or not. I know some people are probably like, what? Like how you insecure? I'm going to tell you guys a little backstory, but before I begin, I do want to give you guys the definition of what insecurity means. It literally means having lack of confidence in oneself. It literally just means someone just not believing who they are because they have the lack of confidence in oneself. It's kind of crazy, right? For example, I grew up in a very conservative household. So that means we had rules and regulations as far as what we could and could not do. So I did in a way already feel alone just because I did have a lot of siblings, mind you, but I feel like I never truly could connect with one because I never fit in or had the ability to just connect (laughs) with another person. When my parents got divorced, and I had the ability to go to school. I was very antisocial. I wasn't like talkative. I just didn't know how to communicate to people in a way where they're not saying, what? What are you talking about? I had to learn how to talk to people, which is kind of crazy because the 13 year old, 12, 11 year old me would have never thought I was gonna be doing this at all. (laughs) I only saw YouTube as just a hobby. I didn't think I was going to be doing this full time. Besides that, when I went into middle school for the first time, I experienced feeling insecure about myself. My mom, you know, she was still struggling and dealing with the whole divorce process. It was kind of a tough time for me, especially because it was my first time going into public school. So with that being said, I remember a lot of people bullying me because of how skinny I was. And look, Listen, I can't control how I look, okay? There's no way I'm going to control how I look because if I had the ability to look a certain way, just know. That was the first time I ever experienced dealing with insecurity. I was like, dang, I am skinny. Let me start eating more. Let me start doing more. And I realized that it didn't matter what I did. I still, at the end of the day, felt insecure about myself, even in the clothes I was wearing. It just was a continuous battle within myself to feel confident with my body. And for the longest, I just didn't like it. I was just like, you know what? Like, I'm just so skinny. Like, and then I had my mom's side of the family and my dad's side of the family. Whether it was jokingly or not, I still took it personal, but they called me flaca. So if you guys don't know what that is, that means skinny, okay? They literally used to call me skinny. I felt attacked, okay? Can you imagine the 11 year old precious just feeling attacked? Yeah, that was your girl right here. I was in tears in my room and my closet. So that was really the first time I truly experienced feeling insecure about myself on a whole different type of level. Now that you guys have the understanding of what insecurity is, I want to take you guys to the first bullet point. And the first bullet point I have is how comparing yourself kills your self-esteem. Like, 
I didn't realize the more that I compared myself on a daily basis, how it was killing me emotionally. And it's kind of sad because I would have never thought, me personally, I would be the type of person to compare myself. I mean, now you can't tell me otherwise. Of course, I have my days where I'm like, dang, I kind of wish I, I kind of, you know, I kind of wish I, but at the end of the day, I know my worth as far as who I am as an individual and what I bring because I am, I'm exquisite. (laughs) I am rare, okay? I'm a rare breed. Where I am now and where I used to be, If I can help someone understand that comparing yourself is actually toxic, you realize like, whoa, what are the benefits that I'm bringing to myself by comparing myself on a daily basis? I said something a while ago in the lines of comparing yourself is almost like the comparison game of tag because everyone's trying to be something at the end of the day. Because if we're comparing ourselves to everyone else, who are we ultimately trying to become? I'll wait. (laughs) We don't know, that's the answer. There's no one perfect on this earth but Jesus Christ himself. Whether you're religious or not, I want you guys to understand that no one is perfect and having flaws just makes you realize how human we are. We're going to not be perfect, which is, which I find the beauty in because if we all looked symmetrical, (laughs) if we all looked the same, where is the uniqueness, the beauty behind an individual? I feel like those flaws just enhance someone. I mean, of course, they can be changed and altered in the future, but at the end of the day, you get to know someone on a different level rather than being what it is you desired to begin with. Because trust me, Baby, we all deal with comparing, but you have to understand that comparing yourself is doing yourself a disservice because you're devaluing who you truly are and who you are meant to be in this world. So really sit down and ask yourself, why is it that you're comparing yourself to things and people that is ultimately killing your self-esteem on a daily basis? So once you find that question and sit down with yourself, you'll realize how simple it is to get rid of those distractions. And honestly, I believe that social media is one of the leading factors for why this generation is very insecure about themselves and why we feel like we're trying to live up to this unrealistic expectations on social media. And I challenge everyone listening and or watching to delete their social media platform for at least 24 hours or a week. No, I'm not saying delete your whole account. I'm not saying deactivate it. But if you wanna take those extreme measures, do so. But I'm saying from personal experience, deleting social media has not only benefited me, but it has opened my eyes to the reality of the world and not this illusion that we see through social media itself. So I challenge everyone to take the initiative to delete social media for 24 hours, a week, a month, however long you need, but do it so you can get your clarity back and your insanity is intact, okay? You don't wanna be cuckoo because you have all these illusions in your head based on social media. So. I challenge everyone to do that moving forward. So the next bullet point is why do you minimize your self-worth? Like really think about it. Like why do you minimize your self-worth? And I realize as women, we do this quite often and quite frequently, whether you know it consciously or not, we as women tend to minimize ourselves so we can accommodate for the people around us. And for example, I was talking to my therapist a couple of days ago and we were having a discussion and she literally told me like hey precious do you feel like you validate other people's feelings and emotions than your own feelings and emotions and me i was like nah what's he talking about like me like nah i validate my feelings i take the initiative to listen to myself and then i had a pause i had to breathe and i had to realize like whoa, unconsciously, I have been validating other people's feelings and emotions rather than my own because 
I felt for whatever reason, it was okay to minimize my self-worth so I can accommodate for other people. But now that I realize like, okay, that's something that I need to work on. I have been changing my perspective, how I talk to people, how I handle certain situations because your girl, she's not perfect, okay? <laughs> I am progressing. I am not perfect and I don't want people to think just because I have a platform or just because I am an influencer or a content creator means that I'm any better than any person on the face of the planet. And I do want to remind you that I am flawed as well. So don't look at me as some icon because I am growing and learning and developing just as you are. So the next bullet point is what triggers those insecurities? I found, again, social media was my biggest trigger because I would look on social media and compare myself to like unrealistic expectations like clear skin and perfect hair and uh, hourglass body. And I'm like, listen, I'm trying to look like this. But I realized like no one is built like that. There's something off something gotta be off on somebody and if not you are blessed i you you are blessed like you're honestly so blessed if you have the ability to just be flawless but i'm talking to the people who aren't flawless i'm talking to the people who, who feel like they want to change something about themselves whether it's good or bad because i feel like comparing yourself can be taken two types of ways. There's the toxic way of comparing yourself, which is talking negativity, doubt, and all that. Blah. And then you have the positive comparison, which is ultimately just looking up to someone as inspiration to be the version of yourself that you ultimately want to become. And for example, I look at certain Instagram, not models, but fitness pages, because I want personally to be fit. I want to physically look good good. I want to physically feel good. I want to be my best. So you really just have to sit down with yourself and ask yourself what those triggers are and how you can eliminate them as quickly as possible. Because once you get rid of those triggers, now you're using that time that you would be focused on the negative. Now you're using that time to focus solely on talking to yourself in a more positive way and find you and find who you are and what your purpose is and how to be confident and fully walking in your purpose. Yeah, you really have to sit down and say, what are my triggers for my insecurities? How do I minimize my self-worth for other people? And why comparing yourself to other people is killing your self-esteem in the long run. Once you ask yourself those questions, I feel like it'll be a little easier to deal with those moments in your life when you feel insecure or you don't feel your best. It's totally normal to not feel good all the time. People think I need positivity every single second of the day and every minute of the hour. Like you're not being realistic with yourself because you're expecting a positivity that is ultimately going to change throughout time and the duration and lifespan that you live because not everyone's gonna live rainbow and butterfly life. The world we live in is messed up. And we're going to have days where we're going to feel negative. Once you find what works for you and how you can make yourself feel just a little better, not saying you have to be happy all the time like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> I'm saying once you find that works for you, when those, those thoughts come in your mind or when that negativity, you know, passes through because it's passing it's not staying it's passing we're all gonna have days where we feel insecure but don't let that stop you in being who you truly are and owning your authenticity once you own your authenticity when you own your authenticity you realize that you're walking in the fullest version of yourself which is confidence which is being yourself which is not caring about other people and their opinions and what they have to say so the next bullet point is how you can be set free 
from being insecure. There's no right or wrong way. There's no one specific way. Something that I realized is how you can be free from this insecurity is owning up to being negative on yourself. It first comes with accountability. The second one is self-awareness. And the third one is applying what it is you learned. When I say I kind of struggle with applying things that I learned, I mean, if we can be honest, we can hear the information. I can give you the knowledge or you can be given the knowledge, but if you don't apply it, then why did you listen to this podcast to begin with? You know, if you're not gonna wanna do the work, you can expect a different outcome. I think Einstein said that is insanity when you do the same thing and, and you expect a different outcome. How can you expect a different outcome if you're not willing to see yourself free from that negative mindset? And that is the T, okay? <laughs> last but not least, my last bullet point is you are more than enough. You are more than enough. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You are more than a conqueror. And everything that, everything society has told you that you couldn't be or couldn't achieve or couldn't inspire, you are everything you need to be, to do everything that you were meant to do on this earth. Your girl here has things she's dealing with and me going to therapy, and this is why I encourage therapy because not only are you giving yourself the ability to express yourself, you're giving yourself the ability to work through past things that is affecting you currently. So I highly suggest getting a, a therapist and I highly suggest everyone taking the ability to want to grow, educate yourself, figure out how can you be more confident? And I made a YouTube video about how to be confident because it's not about materialistic things. It's not about external changes or modifications because material, material things come and go, but internal work lasts. It's like knowledge. The more you educate yourself, doesn't matter how old you get, the knowledge will remain in your brain. <laughs> so you have the ability to teach people what it is they don't know and actually enlightening people who didn't know this information. All I have to leave you guys off with is that you guys are more than enough and you can be anything and anyone you set your mind to only if you realize that the power is within yourself and that people and voices outside of yourself should never dictate what your next move is because of what they say. You're gonna have people who are gonna tell you what you can't do, what you should look like, what you should do. But once you find that security within yourself and with your trauma and with your past experience that you've had to deal with, I personally, how I deal with these things is I pray. I pray to God because this is some that's a source of my happiness. That's the source of how I rejuvenate myself. Because honestly, sometimes don't have the energy to do what it is I'm doing. And me doing it on my own, I won't make it. I'll burn out. I'll forget what my purpose and mission was to begin with. And that's why when I say I pray about these things and I really take into accountability what it is that I'm doing with my life because without that self-awareness, without that ability to let go, that ability to be set free, you realize the you hinder your progress and you prolong the journey and the process because you don't know how to let go. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. I hope it's inspiring, it's enlightening, and it changes your perspective on what it is you're doing. And with that being said, guys, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this podcast and this episode today. And definitely comment down below how you guys like these sit down talk videos because I, I just want to know. <laughs> I will see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next episode. <laughs>